Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is the little tiny Nikon Coolpix S6600. Now, when I unboxed this on the channel, it was quite a while back, but I've been super, super busy and I wanted to give it a good test. I actually put out there that this could be the ideal vlogging camera. And the reason I said that is because it's a nice compact camera, as you can see, but it's also got a flippy outy screen. So when you're recording yourself, you can actually see what's going on. You can frame things perfectly. And I was super excited actually, because for a long time now, I've really wanted to get into vlogging on a more regular basis. And I thought that this could be the ideal solution. Now it is a good camera, 16 megapixels. It's got a 12 times optical zoom that goes nice and wide. I think it's 24 or 25 millimeters at its widest. Uh, it does full HD video, 30 frames per second nice and light very very compact in fact if i just get out of my pocket my iphone 5s you can see uh, that it's roughly uh, about the same sort of thickness well a little bit thicker it's nothing like the same size is it actually but you can see in comparison what it's like compared to an iphone 5s so completely pocketable but there are some downsides let me just point out that couple of the downsides first of all if you've got a camera without a flippy outy screen so you're using it like this and you are using it for vlogging then you can hold it very easily so you can hold it like this or you can hold it like this or like this however you want to hold it but with the flippy outy screen it's much more cumbersome you can't obviously hold it on the screen really that's a bit dodgy you have to sort of put your hand round the back like this. You have to avoid this side because the screen's pointing out. And holding it like this feels a bit weird as well. It's not a deal breaker, but it just feels a little bit clumsy. So a flip out screen is all right, but I think the ideal position for a flip out screen for vlogging is if it flipped out on the top, as some cameras do, not very many. I think one of the Sony Next range uh, actually flip all the way up on the top and the Panasonic GF6 that I had before that flipped out on the top if I remember rightly so at least if it flips out on the top you can hold it on all sides without the screen getting in the way uh, the other thing that isn't great on this let's get the negatives out of the way first is we've got two microphones on the front here but I've experienced this with Canon compact cameras and I've experienced it with this as well but they make me sound almost like a chipmunk. So all of the bass tones in my voice, and I've got a reasonably deep voice, not a very deep voice, but all of the bass tone seems to disappear and it really pushes the treble up. And then I have to adjust that when I'm editing uh, the videos, I have to sort of tweak that and get rid of some of the treble and maybe push the bass up a little bit. I don't know why it does that. I don't know why the Canon ones do that as well. But apart from that, it's really very, very nice. We've got a little cover on the bottom there where you put your battery and your memory card and it uses SDHC or SD uh, memory cards. And the battery, although it's a tiny battery, seems to last okay. Uh, I've been pleasantly surprised actually, the amount of videos I've been able to capture and photos on one charge, it's been very, very pleasing indeed. The actual quality of the photos, very good. Don't forget this is 16 megapixels, so a nice amount of detail. Uh, the dynamic range on them, not the best you're gonna get. The actual optics, again, not the highest quality optics you're gonna get, but this is a really good price point. So for the money you're paying, it's more than acceptable. Now it's primarily plastic construction, but it does feel very, very well made. In fact, the quality of the plastics used, with the exception maybe of the back of the screen, are very high quality. Now also when I unboxed this, I showed you a feature where you could do this gesture control. And because it was an unboxing, I hadn't read the instructions. I was sharing my unboxing experience with you for the very first time. And I completely failed in demonstrating that gesture option. So I'm going to show you that now. And basically what you do with the gesture control is when you've got this mounted on a tripod, maybe a little bit of a distance away from you, 
instead of having to set the self timer mode and then run to the camera and push that shutter button then run back behind the camera you can hold your hand up so that it meets the icon in the middle of the screen and then it gives you four options and the four options are to either zoom in or zoom out or take a photo or start a video recording now one of the funny little things that it does is once the video has started recording probably as a fail safe measure actually so it doesn't accidentally stop recording you can't stop the recording with a gesture control you actually have to go up to the camera and uh, stop that recording with the record button on the back of the camera but I think it's great because if you especially if you're taking photos and you want to get in the frame you hold your hand up to the gesture control hit the take photo icon it counts down from three and then takes the photo so it's a really nice way of doing it of course you can connect it via wi-fi and do the whole wi-fi control thing but if you haven't got the wi-fi capability or you don't want to mess around with that you can quickly mount this on a tripod stand it on a wall a gate post hit that sort of gesture control and take a really good either self-portrait of yourself or a group shot without actually having to physically touch the controls of the camera that's a really nice feature it's not particularly well implemented it's not fail safe you did struggle i do struggle sometimes getting it to recognize my hands in the center of the screen but overall i've been really really pleased with how this has been performing now some of the videos that i've taken with this you will have seen on the uh, geek vlogs channel and also on the geek noise channel i did my seventh year uh, celebration because i've been on youtube seven years now and i actually recorded that with this camera and I think it came out pretty well. I did have to water the audio. Uh, for photos, I haven't been using it quite as much. I've been mainly testing this for video, but it does a really good job. And the display, although it's quite a low resolution, is perfectly uh, good, a perfectly good resolution to actually display the photos. But I'm just trying to get to a photo to show you on here. Bear with me, bear with me. Did I actually take any photos on this memory card? Plenty of video. Here we go. Oh, actually, I'll show you that because that's a fairly good uh, screen to show you, to, to just show you how clean and crisp that screen actually is for displaying back uh, your video footage or your photos. So very good screen. Um, and as I showed you a little bit earlier, there's another one, I'll show you that one very very clear that's actually part of a video that I was working on so really good the, the screen as I showed you a little bit earlier goes all the way around to face forwards on the camera or you can fold it back on the body like so so that it's more compact and of course when the camera is not in use you can fold it all the way around and then protect the screen so that there's no screen showing a uh, plastic tripod mount, again, expected at this sort of price point. Would have been nice to see a metal tripod mount, but you can't have everything. It's got HDMI out, nice little sort of thumb rest on the back, which makes it a little bit easier to hold. This is glossy, so it's a little bit slippery, but again, perfectly nice to, to hold. You just sort of rest your finger underneath, and all of the controls are where you would expect them to be. It's got a nice sort of automatic scene mode selection on the top as well. And overall, it just does a really good job. Uh, I've been pleased with it. Is it going to be the ultimate vlogging camera? Well, unfortunately not. I think the only thing that really lets this down is the audio capture isn't that great for video. Uh, so that's a disappointment which stops me really giving it full marks as a possible great vlogging camera. But I love the flip out screen. I really do. Oh, one other thing is it's not very fast at responding. Sometimes when you hit that record button, there is a delay between you hitting the record button and it actually sort of cropping in and starting recording. But that said, my Panasonic Lumix G6 I'm using to record this video on, that has a delay as well when I want to start recording. So all cameras do that to, to a certain respect. But the video quality is good, photo quality is good, nice compact little package. This is the Nikon Coolpix S6600. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.